Earlier this week, there was a news story that really hit home for educators and parents with school-aged children in Australia. City Point Christian College in Carindale, Brisbane, made headlines all around Australia for the introduction of a distressing new enrolment contract, demanding families denounce homosexuality and adhere to traditional gender roles, asserting that homosexuality and gender identity issues sit on the same wavelength as incest, pedophilia and bestiality. This has sparked a massive amount of controversy because it's outlining that homosexuality and gender identity issues are still viewed as a pathological problem in Australia, meaning that people put up with these people but do not truly accept them. City Point Christian College has ensured that if parents and students of the school cannot accept the terms of the new enrolment contract, the school has the ability to cancel the enrolment of the student. This also gives the school the ability to cease the employment of an educator or employee of the school that identify as homosexual or transgender. So why is this even happening? The Religious Freedom Bill, a bill that was promised by Scott Morrison in 2018 when he was elected Prime Minister to protect people from religious discrimination of their authentic religious beliefs. However, with the introduction of this bill, which is meant to minimise discrimination, does exactly the opposite by allowing schools to discriminate against staff and students, which is exactly why City Point Christian College is a critical example of what the passing of this bill in 2022 will bring more commonly among Christian and Catholic schools within Australia. Helen Clapman, a former teacher of City Point Christian College, resigned from her job on the 31st of January over the demands to sign the contract referring to homosexuality as a sin. Helen is the perfect example of how educators and parents of the school must be feeling. She has a gay daughter who luckily graduated before any of this happened, a year 11 son whose entire world has been ripped apart, but is also a teacher at the school. Listen to what she had to say about why she couldn't sign the contract. So it was the vocabulary around the children presenting with gender issues. As an educator, my priority is to make sure that each child that I interact with feels safe. But when a child tells us with tears in their eyes that they don't feel safe, what are we doing? What are we doing? And in fact, in that documentation, it says that both at the beginning of enrolment and during enrolment, if they don't adhere to this, we terminate the enrollment. I can't, I can't work for an organisation that does that to kids. This is extremely important because it emphasises that regardless of the sexual orientation or gender of the child, the role of an educator is to keep the children in our classroom safe and to provide them with a quality, world-class education. How can teachers do this if the reason why children don't feel safe is because of the embedded discriminatory policies the school chose to put in place? These themes of fear of homosexuality and non-binary thinking take Australia back almost 20 years to the initial panic of 2004 when the children's program Play School introduced a same-sex family to the show, sparking months and months of debate about whether it was politically correct to push gay agendas onto children. Well, doesn't this bill do exactly that for City Point Christian College? Before the children even start school, their parents are forced to sign a contract where the school is forcing heterosexual agendas onto them, right? This entire City Point Christian College debacle has raised many concerns around what the Religious Freedom Bill means for school communities. For teachers, it makes us think, will I be fired for identifying as gay or transgender if I work at a Christian school? Can I even apply for a job at a Christian school? For parents, it's, what is the main goal of Christian education? Do Christian schools care more about the sinful actions of their students over the quality of the education they provide? Can I subject my child to this? And for students, it's the constant feelings of shame, fear or judgment, or even being exiled from their religious community. All justifiable questions and worries made possible by the potential passing of the Religious Freedom Bill and its ability to turn unlawful discrimination into lawful statements of belief. I sat down with my dear friend Phil, who is a pre-service teacher from Edith Cowan University. He's also a vibrant member of the LGBTQIA community to gauge what his experience was like attending a Catholic school during his primary years, but also to get his take on the City Point Christian College media frenzy. Thank you so much for being here today, Phil. Thanks so much for having me on this podcast, Amy. So, Phil, how would you describe your schooling experience in Australia? Um, I would describe my schooling experience... I'm going to say pretty positive. Um, I was quite lucky to have quite a supporting 
um, range of teachers throughout primary and high school uh, and a supporting family throughout schooling. Um, I think the only negative part about my schooling life would have been uh, the students and well, peers that, you know, get through that side of bullying. Would you say that the role of the teacher changes between mainstream schools and, you know, Catholic or Christian schools? Absolutely not. I believe that the activities or daily activities within mainstream and Catholic Christian schools may be a bit different, but overall the role of the teacher should be to provide quality education for a diverse selection of all students. Can you recall any times in your education um, at the Catholic school or even high school where you were the subject of discrimination? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, I can think of a few just off the top of my head, but um, one, when I was in primary school, I used to play a lot of netball. Um, so I was kind of teased that I didn't play the football or wasn't one of the football boys or the soccer boys. So, you know, it was very hard to really enjoy netball and have fun in sport that I really wanted to do. Boys can play any sport just like girls can play any sport. Which leads us onto the next sort of topic of this podcast, which is the massive debacle um, in City Point Christian College. What was your reaction to this implementation of a new school policy? Uh, my immediate reaction was shocked and appalled. Like, I just can't believe that this is actually happening in our life, 2022, and here we are. Um, first of all, as what I went into personal, I just thought exactly, what if this was me? What if this was happening to me and my children? And then as a teacher, as I go into the mindset of a teacher, I just think, why would they do this to children? How could this happen? Do you think that the Christian Education National should have the right to dictate this in Christian schools? Of course not. I don't think that it's any of their business. And I think that, if anything, this should be between the parents, family guardian and the child. And I don't think that a child's sexuality or gender should affect their education in any way. I actually just wanted to mention that Equality Australia, which is an LGBTQIA plus advocacy group, um, have already had concerns about the religious freedom bill which Scott Morrison put forward in 2019 and is actually due to pass they say roughly this year. The concern is around whether discriminatory language like the one in the contract for City Point really makes us consider whether those statements are protections of belief or whether they are unlawful statements that will be made lawful if this bill is passed. What do you think? Well, I think when the bill was first drafted, I don't believe that they considered the whole picture. There's a massive line drawn between protecting religious beliefs and promoting religious hate. And just going back to your experience um, at a Catholic school, we were just talking before we sat down to record this podcast about, you know, having to repent for your sins and ask for forgiveness. Um, because when you're so young and, you know, you're doing particular things and all of a sudden you have to sit down and ask for forgiveness sometimes you don't even realize you know that the things that you're doing are sins for example being homosexual or transgender or even queer or asexual any of those yeah I can remember um, going into confession and having to ask for forgiveness for not doing the dishes and on a serious note the concept of sinning it kind of stuck with me up until I was about 19 or 20 I kept telling myself that you know, you're not gay, you, you don't have these gay thoughts, you're not attracted to men, you, you like girls. Um, growing up queer in Australia, a story by David Ma, talking about his experience in Christian schools. It writes, They challenged us to take Christ into our hearts, but that first required deep acknowledgement of shame. First shame and then forgiveness. That's their business. You don't have to be a young queer for this to work. There's a trace of self-disgust in most of us that can be worked up into shame, especially in those most difficult, precious years when, we're, when we are on the threshold of sex. But a young homosexual is particularly easy pickings, fearful of himself, his family, and the disapproval of the world. What do you think about that? How does that make you feel? Yeah, I have embodied shame up until I was about 20, like I said. Um, and the funny thing is that I would never judge somebody on their religion, but they would judge me on my sexuality. I mean, overall, in the classroom, um, our role as teachers is to make sure that gender inequality doesn't exist. An article by Jessica Alba uh, encouraged teachers and educators to reflect on some of our own classroom practices, like, you know, what text do we use and do they represent men and females, like, fairly? And do we encourage empowering non-sexist behaviours among students or are we promoting stereotypes, you know? 
Yeah, in PAC actually, um, my PAC teacher pulled me aside actually after a class I took and just mentioned something about and like uh, announcing the whole class as, hey guys, and I actually took that feedback on and realised like this is not acceptable, I shouldn't be saying hey guys, it's not fair to everybody in, in the room. And I guess it, it does come down to us as educators just making sure that we do our own research, research on you know the text that we're using and that we are mindful of the embedded stereotypes that we all have in Western society. Um, and to, yeah, like what, with your netball thing, to call out sexist notions because otherwise children, they won't know, you know. Take all these steps to make sure that children have a fair and equitable education. Yet some schools, just like City Point Christian College, go that next step to make sure that the children in the school don't represent something that they don't want. Why do you think this story caused such uproar around Australia, not just in the school community? Christians have the right to have their own interpretation of what it means to be a Christian. So why so many Christians are finding it impossible to uh, be associated or aligned with this school is because their beliefs don't exclude the LGBTIQ plus community. At the end of the day, at the end of the day, like we've said throughout this podcast, the role of a teacher is not to judge them based on their sexuality or gender, but it's to provide them with a quality education that's free from discrimination and provide them a safe learning environment for them to strive and hopefully succeed in their futures. Thank you so much for answering my questions today, Phil. That's okay, Amy, anytime. I just feel that, you know, it was really good to get your perspective, having gone to a Catholic school and having, you know, hidden the shame of being gay throughout your adolescence um, and also being, you know, a vibrant member of the LGBTQIA plus community.